Capability Module. Business capability is the expression or the articulation of the capacity, materials, and expertise an organization needs in order to perform core functions. The new module is available next to all the already existing modules in the main menus. All the existing create and edit features are similar to all the rest of the objects. That means users can click on the new button to create a capability. Or use the tree right click. This module contains some specifics that will allow users to better describe what the organization can do. All the main new properties will be found in the analysis section. This is the section where it will be possible to edit and manage the business value, technical health, importance and strategy, and competitive position. All of these are editable under four categories, depending on the type. The main new field of this section is the SWOT analysis. The user will be allowed to enter and manage all the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats on a SWOT type table. Finally, we also added the maturity section where users can define all the maturity levels and targets. When all the data is entered, users will be able to validate and consult the information in the graph section with a color-coded approach. Here's an example of what the graph looks like with the data previously entered by a user. Users can see the different color overlays based on the dropdown, business value, importance to strategy, and technical health. On the detail view of a capability, we're able to see the overview of all the information entered and the relationships that were added to the capability. In the Impact section, users can see all the objects impacted that assess the current and required supporting business entities, like processes, applications, roles, risks, procedures, etc., to deliver on current and new capabilities. Users can also see and edit the current maturity level and also the associated targets in the new maturity section. In addition to all the new features, we have exactly the same standard features in the other modules as the audit trail, move options, copti, approval, etc. Edit analysis from map. In this new EPC release, EPC will allow users to directly edit the analysis data from the process map instead of going to the analysis tab under the governance module. To use this feature, users go to graph from process module. When selecting edit analysis, then a window opens with all the labels to be edited. Users will be able to enter the new data and once saved can validate the information entered in the graph. Visio Import Wizard. In this new EPC release, we have included a new feature allowing users to match Visio shapes with BPMN flow object shapes while importing new Visio process maps. The new feature presents this new file that is Match Visio Shapes, and by default, in the drop down, we will find the Auto Match option. That means that the system will match by default the Visio shapes with our BPMN flow objects. If the user created any templates, they will be found in this dropdown. After the selection, the user will click on Next to be able to match the Visio shapes from the uploaded from the document with the system BPMN flow objects. The shapes are presented by their name and the user can select the desired match as BPMN flow object or simply ignore a shape if desired. We also find the Create Template option, where users can name and create the matching template for the next imports. Adding this layer of flexibility will allow users to import better quality maps and save time on map edits post-import. The improved import functionality also now maintains your original Visio shape layout after import, historically ran in auto layout. We also improved the export to Visio option, whereby graph processes also maintain their layout and export, but swim lane maps require an automated layout within Visio to be run. Mass Actions 
In this new EPC release, editing and making changes to multiple objects on the list page just became incredibly easier for both modelers and system admins. When users click on the Select All checkbox and then clicking on the three dots icon, the extended list appears with the option. First of them, Mass Publish. Publish feature allows end users to publish several objects at once. The next one is the Mass Edit Responsibilities feature allows modelers to edit assets, org units, resources, and roles of several objects at once. The next one, Subscribe and Unsubscribe. This option allows modelers to easily select various objects in list page to subscribe or unsubscribe of them at once. The next one is Mass Delete. This option allows modelers to delete more than one object through a single action. And finally, Mass Move. This new option lets modelers move more than one object at the time to a new parent. Multi-Edit. The new feature is available on the list view of each module. By clicking the three dots menu, user will select the Edit button to open the edit form that allows the mass edits on all the selected objects. The user can also mass update the custom attributes by clicking on the option above. This action will open the custom attributes form and will let the user edit multiple custom attributes at the same time. As mentioned, this new feature is available across all the EPC modules and eligible object types. The main goal adding this feature is the time saving when users need to edit multiple objects simultaneously. Batch Task Completion Now in EPC, approving, endorsing, and confirming multiple objects on the to-do page just became incredibly easier for both modelers and system admins. To use this feature, users go to the to-do list. There, users will see all pending actions. To filter their pending approvals, users can click on the Approval button, use the filter in action type, or simply select the pending approvals by clicking on the checkbox of the objects. When clicking on the three dots, an extendable list appears. Users are then able to select Approve and then choose from the options Approve or Reject. This feature also supports e-signature option. This feature also allows users to rapidly mass endorse or confirm different objects. This new option significantly increases productivity, enabling modelers to make multiple changes quickly and effortlessly. New Asset Attributes in EPC, we use the object named Asset to model hardware, software, and systems by your organization. In this new EPC release, we have included a new section to the Assets object named What are the Assets Information Security Attribute? to properly identify the importance of reducing risk in regards to information security. Modelers can find this new feature when editing or creating an asset in Properties section. These new assets have been added to Audit Trails payload, import and export, edit, and information security in the details page. In order to facilitate the view of the data sensitivity and vendor and technology supplier attributes, these two attributes have been added to the list page. Now, users can add and view the data sensitivity and vendor technology columns on list page. The new section of properties, what are the assets information attribute in assets, has been also added to export and import. Now, when system admins import or export assets, these information will also be part of the asset object data. To use this feature, users click on the three dot icon on the top right of the page. Then an extendable list appears. There, the users can select import or export data from the current EPC environment. Once the assets information security attributes is defined, it will be found on the detail page under information security. In this new EPC release, the new parser application will allow users to upload a document and to break it into EPC objects that are ready to be exported to the EPC web app. The goal is to simplify the conversion from text format to EPC objects and to improve the quality of the exported EPC objects. 
The first step to be able to use the parser is to upload the document that will be parsed and exported to EPC. This action is possible by clicking on the plus Upload New Document button. After clicking, an upload pop-up will appear to select the document to parse. Only one document at the time can be parsed. Multiple document parsing is not supported yet by the parser. Only word type documents are supported at the moment. Once the document is uploaded, user will make sure they uploaded the right one and then select it. Then the user will click on the next button. Users with existing templates will see them in this step. Users can also create a new template by entering a template name. The manual tagging is an important step while creating or editing a template. It will define how the objects will be treated in the next parsing while using the newly crafted template. 1. When selecting a text, a contextual menu will appear. We're tagging first the process name and the process description. Parser will automatically detect the link between object type. The hierarchy and associations can be validated as the tagging is being made on the left of the screen. For the table tagging, users will have two options when clicking on the plus entire table or select header. When tagging the entire table, this will allow user to tag the whole table as an object that can be found later in the rich text in EPC data. The second option, select header, will allow the user to define what type of header is the table columns header or rows header. Once this first step is done, user will tag cells as individual objects. For example, we can tag these cells as procedure tasks and these tasks as roles. User can use the auto tagging feature where the parser will automatically identify data to be tagged. By default, the parser is able to detect generic responsibilities, roles, and assets. If the feature is used without any custom entry, we also provide in the settings menu the option to be able to upload and use custom tags. For this, users need to check the option and download the template where the users can add their own custom tags. You have the ability to train the model to be smarter and better aligned to your company by uploading your own custom object lists. For example, list of assets used in your company. The system will then extract this content from the unstructured data automatically. The more content you use for training, the smarter the AI model will be. Once this is done, Users will upload their custom tags or replace a previous custom tag file that was already uploaded. Tagging objects. It's recommended to tag the integrality of the tags as objects. Partially tagged objects might result in errors when the data will be exported. In this example, we're tagging the sequence numbers separately and just before the object names. This is just to avoid unnecessary space tagging that we can have. Once the tagging is complete, users can click on Parse to apply the tagging on the rest of the document. After the parsing process, users should revise if all the tags are correct and remove some if necessary, and we can see how all the data has been parsed. For a more advanced parsing, user can use the Rule Builder. In this example, we can see how this section wasn't tagged and will have issue while parsing, as the format of the different objects of the paragraphs are not different. Let's create a rule to cover this specific section. We will use a combination of conditions that all of them must be met to work. First condition will tell what is the section that is targeted. any text, paragraph or not, between custom text that will open a text field where I will add the beginning of my section. In this case, four responsibilities and assigned roles. And the end of the section will be the next title. 
Five, manage life cycle of global quality processes, GMP and GDP. The second condition will be any text in paragraph before custom text and add the following symbol as in the document. And finally, add the action tag as role name. Second rule will target the description part. The first condition is the same as the rule one. The second is targeting any text in paragraph after the custom text and adding the action tag as role description. Once saved, we will rule the parser to see our rules apply to the section. Before exporting, if the result is accurate, we can click Save Template. Once you've trained your model, you can save your template and reuse it across many similar documents. The most important part of the parser is being able to export the date to EPC. To export the data to EPC, users can click on the Export button. The action is available after the first tag of the document. On the top right of the screen, users can find the Settings window. The two available options, Create New Object, when exporting to EPC, all the tagged elements will be exported as new EPC objects. Create and reuse. All existing EPC objects will be used if they were previously created and all new objects will be created. Environment and language menu. Environment. This drop down to select the environment where the objects will be exported. And language. This allows you to specify in which language the content will be imported into. A great utility of this feature is if you are using external translation services of users that don't have access to the EPC, you can generate a process book with all the data, like English, into Word, send the Word document for translation, and then re-import, update content with the additional language, like French. Toggle in Map Views in this new EPC release, we made it easier to change the view from simple graph to swim lane and matrix. To use these features, users will have to be in the graph page of a process. Then they will find the button toggle button saved layout. When the list extends, users can see the following four options, graph, swim lanes, matrix, saved layout, where saved layout is the last graph type that was saved in user preferences. This feature allows the users to easily have access to the different view of their process map without having to edit them or change their map view preferences. This option is also available in edit mode. Right to left language compatibility. In this new EPC release, process maps in EPC are now compatible with languages written from right to left such as Arabic, Farsi, and Hebrew. To activate this feature, users have to be in graph page of a process and click on open button menu in the right side. Then click on the settings. Map options open. There, users can change the orientation of the graph from left to right to right to left. To be able to do that, users have to have display set on graph, swim lane, or matrix. If display is set to saved layout, then orientation button is disabled, and orientation is set to left to right by default. Once users have selected right to left and save changes in map options, then the graph is displayed with orientation right to left in the selected layout. To see the graph in a different layout, users can change it in the top by selecting graph, swim lanes, or matrix. If users select saved layout, then users will see the graph in orientation left to right, 
as graph can only be edited and saved on that orientation. Now, our Arabic, Farsi, and Hebrew users can create their process and then view, print, and download its object book with right-to-left orientation. EPC automatically rearranges the map in order to provide a better map visibility for users reading their processes in one of these languages. Add attachment in pending approval. Now in EPC, users can attach documents to pending approvals and endorsements to share information with the sender. To use this feature, the approver will go to a pending approval or endorsement. In this example, we're using an approval and click on the Add Attachment button. A window will open to allow user to select the file. Once the file has been uploaded, then the file will appear at the next to my name and the sender can consult my document in real time. The Add Attachment button will now be replaced by the Replace Attachment button. By clicking on it, the user will be able to remove the current attached file and replace it with another one. To delete the attachment and not replace it with another one, click on the X button next to the file name. To download the attached file, click on the Download button next to the file name. To preview the attached file, click on the Preview button next to the file name. E-Signature in all modules Now in EPC, users can request the electronic signature when assigning an object to an approval. This feature has been added in all modules. Previously, this feature was limited for process and procedure revisions. In this example, we're in the Performance module. To use this feature as before, users navigate to the Details page of the object. Once here, click on the drop-down menu of the Edit button and select Approval. Now, you can use it on all modules. Meaning, you can digitally sign your regulation updates, risk and control assessments, etc. Moreover, within the document module, not only does it sign all the metadata associated to a file, but also merges the actual file content into the digitally signed approval document as well. Ensure you are and remain compliant using EPC. Document versioning, track changes. In this new EPC release, users will be able to compare the edits in a document between the current minor version and the previous minor version of the same document object. The new feature is available in the document module. When users create a new document under the type document upload, and if for any reason this document is replaced by another new document of the same type, users will be able to download the new document from the new minor version and be able to track the changes on the newly uploaded document. The feature only supports docx documents and can only be applied to documents of the same type. Tracking changes will allow users to have a better view on the edits when multiple changes were made on the minor versions of the same document object. In this new EPC release, we added the new JIRA integration. Users will be able to ensure an optimal collaboration between business analysts and IT. Developers will be able to have a clear view on users' end-to-end -end paths and flows, while analysts will be able to add their requirements directly from the process views. First of all, if users want to have a process in JIRA, they will need to go and create a process by adding the name and description. Then, add the JIRA tag in the categories. On the save, this will automatically create an epic in JIRA. Each process associated to JIRA will create an epic and each task will be created as a user story if associated by the tag. In the following example of workflow, we can see that the scenarios can be different based on which route we take on the workflow. As we can see, the present process and associated tasks are already synced with JIRA. Let's create a new task to see how it will appear in JIRA when synced. I will add this new task and give it a name, a description, and 
also the JIRA tag to make it synchronize. Now that it's saved, here's our new task in JIRA that appears as a new user story under the process that is represented here as the epic. Depending on what version of JIRA you are using, some of the formatting or images and the rich text cannot be supported. If we update the task in JIRA, adding some recs, for example, and save, and we go back to EPC, we will find the updated information in the task. Another valuable item can be found in the JIRA story. Here we can access directly to the object by clicking on this link. When creating a story in JIRA, and when tagging the item by EPC, users will find an object created in the document folder. The object will have the JIRA link associated as a URL. This is how both systems are able to communicate and ensure the synchronization between business and development. In this new EPC release, admin users will be able to assign home tabs to specific group of users. Only the users with the appropriate permissions will be able to see and interact with the selected tabs. The tabs are in the home section, and all these tabs can be set by the admin user. As each tab can target a specific type of user groups, admins can now set up their own permission preferences. For example, the search tab that contains our new search widget can be set to a generic group of users. While, for example, the strategy tab will only be used by managers, or the risk heat map tab is only used by analysts. All the tab permission preferences will be found in the environment admin section, where the admin can add, edit, or delete the group of users assigned for each tab. Right-click actions. In this new EPC release, we give modelers the option to create objects, edit, copy, move, and delete by just right-clicking on an object in the tree of a module. When modelers click on a set in the tree, modelers can create new objects inside of the set and also edit, copy, and delete the set. When modelers click on any object inside of the set in the tree that is part of the tree, Modelers can create objects inside of them, edit, move, copy, and delete. This new feature reduces substantially the quantity of time needed for a modeler by letting them make changes within the tree of a module. Quick shape. In this new EPC release, modelers can now add or select the next shape by simply clicking on the flow object and selecting the next shape from the options offered. EPC will automatically create the next shape and link it to the previous one. To start using this feature, users have to be in edit mode of graph. If users are creating a new graph, then they have to drag the first shape to the swim lane and click on it. If the process already exists, then users just click on the shape and the list of object appears around the item to select the next shape in the process. This new enhancement eliminates the need to drag and drop from the stencil and manually create transitions between shapes, making it easier to create the process graph. Create and Map In this new EPC release, we have included a new feature allowing users to be able to create a process and in a click, being redirected to the mapping. The new feature will be available on the Create Process form after filling all the mandatory fields, users can now directly be able to work on the process mapping by clicking on the Create and Map Call to Action. Once the user clicked on the Call to Action, he's redirected to the Edit view of a process map, where he will be able to create and finalize all the mapping elements related to the process. With this addition, users can finalize faster and in one step, a process and the mapping that this process will be associated with. EPC Mobile App 
In this new release, we launched the new EPC mobile app with mobile-specific features. The app is available on Android and iOS. First step after downloading and opening the application, users will have to enter the EPC server name to access their desired instance. To switch server, users will just have to log off and log in again. Once users are logged in, they will find all the basic actions available, such as approving a task, if any, on the to-do module or navigate the other EPC modules. The main feature of the mobile app is to let the users download objects and navigate offline. To download a process, for example, users can click on the download icon so the process will be available offline. The app will ask users to switch offline when the internet connection is lost or not available. Users can also switch to offline manually by going to their profile and then clicking on the Go Offline button. After going offline, only the downloaded content will be available. With the new app, users can access their downloaded processes anytime without being connected to any network.